Hello, this is Midweek Meditations for Thursday, August 13th, 2020. Glad you've taken a moment to click on this link and, and hear a word of encouragement for today. I want to share with you uh, just that, a word of encouragement that came my way uh, just a couple of days ago, and uh, the Lord's been uh, using it to uh, guide some of my thoughts and, uh, and actually to uh, build me up. Uh, where did it come from? Well, yeah, it came from the Lord. But it also came from a group of fellow pastors that uh, meets together uh, every month. Uh, this is a group that's connected to our denomination. Uh, pastors from across the state gather in various locations. Uh, we take turns hosting. And it's a time for accountability. It's a time for fellowship. It's a time for instruction. And we do a little business along the way as well. Uh, but we had this time uh, together this last Tuesday. And the, uh, the host uh, shared a passage from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in the first five verses. And uh, these things have stuck with me these last few days. And I thought, you know, I'm going to share this with you today because it was such an encouragement to me. Don't you find yourself being distracted more and more as the news of the day uh, continues to degenerate over and over and over? The, the same things, uh, the pandemic, the politics, the uprisings of, of violence in our cities. And uh, it, it just seems that most news is bad news these days. And we can get distracted by that. And it can begin to uh, really take over our, our thought processes and take over our conversations. And uh, we need to guard against that. And these thoughts in uh, 1 Corinthians 2 from the Apostle Paul, uh, help us to remember that we need not be distracted by the events of the day, but rather we need to keep our focus on the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get into this just a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1 says this, When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and him crucified. If we are going to be effective in living our lives for him in this day and in this age, if we are going to be good witnesses, if we are going to be Christ's ambassadors of reconciliation and peace, you know what? We need to be single-minded. The single-mindedness that Paul had uh, was directly connected with the gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news of the gospel. Boy, don't we need more good news. I, I think we do. Our good news needs to start with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we know the story that uh, does not end with the crucifixion on the cross. Yes, the crucifixion when Jesus shed his blood and when he redeemed us by the shedding of that blood and our placing our faith and our trust in Jesus' substitutionary death on the cross. Yes, that's uh, very important, but God's power rose him from the dead, and we too shall rise. That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of the resurrection, that there is new life in Christ. So this single-bindedness on the gospel is extremely important. We also need to add to that uh, this next thought here that comes through in verses 3 and 4. Paul writes, I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words. Well, let, let's stop there for just a moment, because it also reflects back to verse 1 a little bit. When I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. Have you noticed that on social media and perhaps the, um, the public media, that opinion has taken a very uh, decidedly 
higher uh, level in people's thinking than truth. Stop and think about that for a minute. If we don't agree with someone else's opinion, we could be uh, blacklisted. We could be banned. We could be unfriended. All, all, the, all these distractions about what's going on in the world around us, uh, they seem to be accentuated and amplified by the exaltation of one's own opinion over what truth with a capital T uh, might have to say about it. Paul could have come in as a very smart man, as a very uh, effective teacher. He could have leveled the Corinthians. But what did he do? He didn't come with eloquence or superior wisdom. He didn't come with wise and persuasive words. What did he do? He came to them in weakness and fear and with much trembling. What, what does that mean? Well, Paul knew that he had a call from Jesus himself. He knew that he had a responsibility to obey the Holy Spirit and use God's wisdom to use spiritual wisdom to speak God's truth and not to speak his own ideas and his own opinions. You see, it wasn't about him. It wasn't about him being heard. It wasn't about his voice being the loudest voice. But it was all about what the end of verse 4 says, with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. That is such a key for us today. Are we demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit as we communicate good news about the Lord Jesus? And then, then finally this. Uh, the last thing we see in verse 5, the whole purpose of this. So that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. You know what? I don't want your faith to rest on anything about me. I want your faith to rest on that which is unchanging and unchangeable, and that which is eternal. And that's everything that comes from God. That's everything that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's everything that comes from the indwelling and the filling of God's Holy Spirit. And so are we representing Jesus, our Savior and our King, with personal humility? Are we pointing people to him? One of my fellow pastors uh, said this uh, the other day. I wrote it down so, I, so I'd remember it. He said, we are doing God's best when we teach and preach Jesus this way. We love people enough to give them the gospel. That's what it means to be a Christian. And then going on, because we're all preachers in the room, uh, one of the senior preachers among us, kind of the elder elder among us, uh, he said this, when you preach, preach hot for Jesus. Boy, yeah, we're told in scripture that you know, we, we need to be hot. Remember what uh, Jesus said to one of the churches in Revelation? You're lukewarm. I'd rather be hot or cold. But because you're neither, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Boy, let's be hot for Jesus. And remember to preach the good news. Preach the good news. Not be distracted by the events of the day. But to not make it about our opinion, but make it about God's power. Not make it about what's right in our own eyes, but make it about what's right in God eye, God's eyes. Not make it about hate, but make it about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that uh, the Holy Spirit will uh, speak to you as you consider some of these thoughts about uh, how we can be effective communicators of the good news of Jesus Christ today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this uh, time together around your word. Lord, speak to us that we might speak the gospel to speak it lovingly, to speak it clearly, to speak it in such a way that uh, we meet people where they're at because your Holy Spirit has prepared them to hear and prepared us to speak that which would point them to saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus. So, Lord, use us 
We ask your blessing then in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.